Hi, we're EEX 203, Group B44, and our members consist of Patrick Hops, Jason Terranova, Meredith Monticello, and Peter John. And today we're covering the topic of the statistics of poker. To figure out the probability of being a hand in poker, we first start out by calculating the total number of hands possible, which is 2,598,960. Then we figure out the frequency of the five card hand. For a four of a kind, the frequency is 624. For full house, the frequency is 3,744. And for a flush, the frequency is 5,108. And how we got the frequency for a four of a kind, for example, is we took the total number of four, you need one card from each suit, and there's 13 suits, so there are 13 possible sets of four that you could pick from, and then multiply by the number of cards left in the deck after you take four out, which is 48, and that gives you 600, and 24. And for our total number of hands, we got this number by calculating 52 choose 5. Now we take these two numbers and figure out the probability. So the probability will be the frequency over the total number of hands. And for the case of a four of kind, the probability will be 624 divided by 2,598,960. Which is approximately 0.024%. So uh, now what we're actually going to do is we are going to calculate the probability of winning in a game of one-on-one -on -one poker. Uh, the game we're playing is Texas Hold'em, and what happens is both card, both people have two cards in their hand, five cards on the board. Um, the five-card hand. Uh, is determined by the two cards in the person's hand and the best three cards on the board. Um, the way the game works is after the first three cards are put on the board, there's around the decision making, and then the fourth card, round of decision making, and then the fifth card to determine the winner. Uh, <coughs> so the cards have already pre been pre-drawn. Uh, one person has ten, uh, five, and jack, ace. Um, in this case, uh, the cards we draw just happen to um, uh, to not uh, be able to make a flush, so we're not even going to bother with the suits. Uh, so we're actually going to start with the flop, which turns out to be seven, jack, two. Now, if you notice, uh, B already has a pair of jacks, whereas A only has <coughs> only has a uh, ten and a five. And has nothing on the board. So, in order for A to win, uh, A either has to have either two fives or two tens, or a five and a ten, in order to make a triple or two pair, in order to beat B's one pair. Uh, or the other way A can win at this point is to make a straight. And the straight would consist of seven through jack. Because if he has an A or nine, A and nine in these spots, then he'll make a straight. So we're going to actually be calculating the probability of A winning. So the one way A can win is, like I said, either having 5, 10, or 5, and the 10 uh, in those two spots. And one way you can think of this is uh, these two has to be 5s or 10s in, in any combination. And since there are 6 5s or 10s in the deck, you can have 6 choose 2, which is the total number of ways you get 5s or 10s in those two spots. Now, there are 45 cards left in the deck because with 52 cards and 7 already on the board, you have four, 45, and then you're choosing 2 to fill up these two last spots. And if you actually do the math for this, <coughs> it actually turns out to be approx approximately 1.5%. So. Uh, we're going to say that 
probability of 5 or 10 equals 1.5%. And now, we're going to be calculating the probability of a straight. So, with a straight, uh, we either need an 8 or a 9 in this one, and then the other one, whichever one we didn't get on the last box. So, for the turn, uh, we have 45 cards left in the deck, and then we have uh, four nines and four eights, each, either of which can work. So we have eight cards, and and now what we're actually going to do is we're going to figure out give if we happen to hit the eight the eight cards on the turn, what happens in the river? And what happens in the river is we have to choose the other one. If we choose the eight, we need the nine on the river. If we get the nine on the turn, we need the eight on the river. And since there are four of those left, and only forty-four cards left in the deck. We use the product rule in order to figure this out. And then if you actually calculate the probability of this out, you get 1.6%. <coughs> um, so P of straight is 1.6%. So the total uh, right now is 2.1%. So we're going to draw the next card. Uh, the next card we draw uh, happens to be an A of diamonds. So now, if you notice, the probability of um, of A getting either fives or tens for the last of spots has been completely eliminated. But uh, what A has now is a uh, flush. I mean, uh, not a flush, it's a straight. So, so now we need to figure out if A could get the straight, then he wins. Otherwise, B wins. Uh, so, so one way we can figure it out is, to, in order to get the, the straight on the river, he needs a 9. There are 4 nines left in deck, because there are no 9s on the board. And there are 44 cards left in the deck. And if you calculate this out, you get approximately So if you know, so if you if you notice that even though the probability of having five or ten was completely eliminated with an eight, um, simply having that eight uh, re increased the probability of a winning by th three three folds. Uh, so so the whole point here is that <coughs> is that fulfilling one a uh, part of a conditional probability, which the straight which the straight was uh, automatically. Um, uh, uh, drastically increase the probability of a winning. However, if, as we draw the last card, it turns out to be a 2, and then the winner becomes B. Yeah. Thank you for watching our video. Remember, to find more videos about discrete mathematics, go to noatom.com. That's K-N-O-A-T-O-M dot com. Go there right now.